This is a photograph in black and white, and I'm about to turn it into a painting. Most of you know Lord of the Rings, but probably don't know the photographer. His name is Henry Cartier-Bresson, and this is the photo that made me his fan. Ninety percent of the time, I use the same eight colors every single time: one white, one cold, and warm of each primary color, and a brown. I always mix my darts from scratch, so I never use black. First, I'm going to mix a warm undertone using burnt sienna. This is a good time to talk about why I chose this photograph in particular and what I hope to accomplish. First, I really like the smug, proud of himself look on the boy's face, and I would like to capture that expression on the scene of a hobbit getting away from stealing vegetables. Secondly, perhaps more importantly, the face capture would not work if the whole composition is weak. And one of the things that made this photograph so strong is its clear distinction and arrangement of shapes and values. I thought this could be a particularly good exercise for me, because one of my own weaknesses is that I often too easily get carried away by working on regional details, at the cost of losing distinct shapes that makes the arrangement interesting. I lose sight of the bigger picture, is what I'm saying, and I hope to use the existing excellent visual structure of the photograph to get me off on a good start and act as a constant correction when I go off track. As you noticed by now, I like to start off my paintings by working very abstractly and on the whole surface at once. The focus at this stage is really just to lay down the desired values and hues at the correct places. This helps me keep the whole picture harmonious, and it's really easy to lay down corrections because I haven't committed to anything yet. It's really not so different from forming a human relationship. You identify the core values first, and then form the memories and fill in the details later, not the other way around. And by the way, the weather around here has been pretty erratic lately. And that's why you see me jumping from sweaters to t-shirts all the time. The next dozens of hours are just spending filling in the details, rendering everything out. For reference, I'm using a picture of Hobbiton from New Zealand that I found on the internet. Of course, I had to take some creative liberties to make some adjustments so that it works with the composition I want, like elongating the stairs or adding and omitting structures. It may not be obvious to see, but I did end up spending a lot of time rendering the stairs, that the general shape of the bigger picture was diminished. I then went back a few more passes trying to fix it, like lightening the whole region and deliberately losing some detail, which still didn't have the desired effect. I then added back some details in darker tones in select places. It may sound paradoxical since I started too dark. But these places I reworked on provided contrast and functioned as a secondary visual anchors for that region, meaning that when your eyes wander to that area, it gives just enough something for your eyes to latch onto.
When it comes to working on the figure, there's just a lot of making things up. I'm definitely not as good as a lot of the figurative, comic-style artists out there who can draw dynamic postures on the fly. So I'm just piecing a lot of references together and keeping things more on the abstract side. I don't want to render everything photorealistically, because that style is not what I enjoy, which I also mentioned in the previous video. I enjoy seeing organic brushstrokes, fake paint marks, and evidence that the artist was having fun. I feel like I'm near the end of this painting today. Uh, I just need to finish this face and maybe add a few more details and make some adjustments and then I will be at a good place to stop. Today is the last day I want to give to myself, so I want to make a sprint today and just get it knocked out of the park. Yeah, wish me luck! For the head, luckily, I had a reference of Pippin Took doing a similar expression from the movie. But I want to keep the likeness of the boy in the photo, and not that of actor Billy Boyd. However, the reference did provide me with valuable information on the colors of the face, and especially the 5 o'clock shadow on the cheeks, which I would not have considered if I was going off of the boy's face alone. Finally, I added a couple more accomplices in the act of running and the silhouette of someone chasing them. All in the background of our main, oblivious character who thinks he has gotten away, full of a took. <laughs> 